Today, I have a red hot deck full of red hot hotties ready to set the world on fire. If you want to see what I mean, stay tuned. Hello, and welcome to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. My name is Chad, and I will be your host. Today's deck tech is an Oathbreaker deck tech for Koth of the Hammer that was requested by one of you lovely people in the comments below on one of my videos. If you ever want to interact with me, learn more about Oathbreaker, or request comment like a deck request content, sorry, like a deck tech, then all you have to do is comment below, and please remember to subscribe. Having said that, let's get on into this deck tech proper. As I said, today's Oathbreaker is Koth the Hammer. He costs 2 and 2 red, and he's a 3 loyalty planeswalker. His first ability is to up him by 1 and untap a target mountain. It becomes a 4 4 red elemental creature till end of turn. It's still a land. Minus 2, we get to add 1 red mana to our mana pool for each mountain we control. And minus five, we get an emblem with mountains we control, have tapped this land, deals one damage to any target. Having said that, it's important to note that this is a heavily themed mono red mountain and elemental creature deck. And I think you'll see more of that as we get into it. Next up, we have our signature spell, which is downhill charge. It gives target creature plus X plus O till end of turn, where X is the number of mountains we control. If we want, we can sack a mountain rather than playing the spell's mana cost. Do you remember that we still accrue uh, commander tax on the spell every time it's cast? Chandra Flame Caller for 4 and 2 red does a lot for the deck. First off, when we plus her, she's going to make us 2 3 1 elemental creatures that last for a turn. If we zero her, we can discard her hand and draw a better one with an extra card on top of it. And if we minus X her, she's a board wipe that deals X damage to each creature. Our next Chandra costs three and a red. She has a five loyalty planeswalker, when we plus one her. She has an anthem effect till the end of turn, giving all of our elemental creatures plus two plus O. Oh. If we minus one her, we get the ramp by two red mana for the turn. And if we minus two her, she'll do 10 damage to any target. That's a pretty decent removal spell in a pinch. It's also two damage to our opponent's face. Next up, we have Koth Fire of Resistance for two and two red. He's a four loyalty planeswalker out of the new Mirrodin Phyrexian set. If we plus two him, we can search our library for a basic mountain card, reveal it, and put it into our hand, and then we shuffle our library. If we minus three him, he's going to deal damage to our creature equal to the number of mountains we control, which is just another piece of removal. And if we minus seven him, we'll get an emblem that says, uh, whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under our control, this emblem deals four damage to any target. It's good to mention here that that is a little bit of a flavor win. Koth is originally from Valakute. Valakute the Molten Pinnacle is a card that says after you have so many mountains in play, if you play additional mounds, they deal 3 damage to any target, and the Vol Shock on Mirrodin do tend to live around the peak of Valakut. Next, we have Adaptive Automaton. It's a 3-cost creature that's a 2-2. That one enters play, we're going to make it an elemental, and all of our other elementals will benefit from a plus 1, plus 1 anthem from it. Akum Hellhound costs one red. He's a 0-1 elemental dog with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield, he gets plus two plus two till end of turn. There are some fetch lands in my mana base that will cause this to trigger multiple times a turn that we'll see later in the deck tech. Ashling Pilgrim from one in a red is a 1-1. One, one. Not only can we make it big by pumping it by paying one in a red and putting one one counters on it, but also, if we do that three times in a turn, we remove all the 1-1 one -one counters from it and deal that much damage to each creature in each player. This is definitely one of those red hot hotties I was talking about. Brightheart Banneret is a 1 in a red elemental warrior that makes all our other elemental and warrior spells cost 1 less to cast. He's a 1-1. One -one. He also has Reinforce 1. We probably won't make good use of that. Next, we have Chandra's Magmut for one in a red. It's a 2-2 elemental dog. We can tap it to deal one damage target player Planeswalker. This is decent Planeswalker hate in a pinch. 
Cinder Pyromancer for two and a red is a zero one. And we can tap it to have it deal one damage to a player planeswalker. Whenever we cast a red spell, we can untap it. So it's nice to be able to use this multiple times in a turn to help burn our opponents down as well as the world they're standing on. We have Kosi's Ravager for three and a red. It's a 2-2 elemental with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you can have it deal one damage to target player or planeswalker. Embodiment of Fury is a 3 and a red cost 4-3 elemental creature with trample that gives land creatures we control trample. It's important to remember that Koth can make our lands creatures. It also has landfall. It says whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can have target land we control become a 3-3 elemental creature with haste until end of turn. Flame Kim Brawler for 1 red is a 0-2 that has fire breathing for 1 red. Flame Kin Harbringer for 1 red is a 1-1. What it'll let us do is tutor our deck for an elemental card, reveal it, um, shuffle our library, and put that card on top. Flame Kin Spitfire costs 1 and a red. It's a 1-1. If we pay 3 and a red, we can have it deal 1 damage to any target of our choosing. Geode Rager for 4 and 2 red is a 4-3 elemental with first strike. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we goad each creature target player controls. Hate Flare for 5 and 2 red is a 5-5 with Wither, so it deals damage to other creatures in the form of minus 1, minus 1 counters. If we pay 2 and a red and tap it, it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so... That is really cool that we can attack with it, maybe weaken an opponent's army or themselves, and then we can pay Tuna Red and untap it to deal that damage to something else. Next, we have Incandescent Soul Stoker for Tuna Red. Other elemental creatures we control have plus one, plus one. If we pay one and a red and tap it, we may put an elemental card from our hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste till end of turn, but we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next turn's end step. Inner Flame Igniter for two and a red is a 2 2 that says we can pay two and a red, and creatures we control will get plus one plus oh until end of turn. If we've done that three times in a turn, all the creatures we control will also gain first strike. Life of the Party is a first strike trample haste zero one creature for three and a red. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus x plus o till end of turn, where x is the number of creatures you control. When it enters the battlefield, if it's not a token, each opponent creates a token copy of it, and the tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. Living Inferno for 6 and 2 red. We can tap it and we'll deal damage equal to its power divided as we choose amongst any number of target creatures. Those creatures deal damage equal to its power to Living Inferno, and it's an 8-5. Next, we have Runaway Skinkin for 1 and a red. It's a 1 1 elemental that says whenever we cast a red spell, we put a 1 1 counter on it. Um, if there's less than 3, if we want, we can remove 3 1 1 counters from it to add 3 red mana to our mana pool. So this can help us ramp and, in some cases, allow us to play multiple spells in a turn. Next, we have Sidardian Cliff Stomper for 1 and a red. As long as it's our turn and we control 4 or more mountains, it gets plus X plus O until. Yeah, sorry, it gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of mountains we control. So it can become a huge beefy boy that can do a lot of damage. Scorch Spitter for a single red is a 1-1 one, one that when it attacks, it deals 1 damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. Soul Bright Flamekin for 1 and a red. If we pay 2 colorless, target creature gains trample until end of turn. If we do three times, if we do that three times in a turn, then we get to generate eight colorless mana so we can put six mana into this to get eight mana out interesting tectonic giant for two and two red is a three four elemental giant creature it says whenever it attacks or becomes a target of spell and opponent controls we get to do one of the following things the first is deal three damage to each opponent exile the top two cards of our library and we may choose one of them until the end of our next turn we may play it so one of those two items Thunderkin Awakener for one and a red is a 1-2 with haste. Whenever it attacks, we choose an elemental creature card in our graveyard with toughness less than Thunderkin Awakeners. Uh, then we return that card to the battlefield tapped in attacking. We sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. 
Next, we have Tunneling Geopede. Between a red, it's a 3-2 creature with landfall. When land enters the battlefield under your control, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. Then Firecat Blitz for X and 2 red is a sorcery. It lets us create X-1-1 red elemental uh, cat creature tokens with haste. We exile them at the beginning of the next end step. If this is in our graveyard, we can pay 2 red and sacrifice X mountains to create X-1-1 red elemental cat creature tokens with haste. Cage Sun enters the battlefield. We're probably going to choose red. Creatures we control that are red will get plus 1, plus 1. Lands that we tap that would add red mana to our mana pool add an additional red mana. Claws of Alicute for 1 and 2 red says Enchanted Creature gets plus 1 plus 0 for each mount we control and first strike. Right of the Raging Storm for 3 and 2 red says Creatures named Lightning Rager can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player creates a 5-1 red elemental creature token named Lightning Rager. It has Trample and Haste, and at the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice this creature. Finally, we have Valakute uh, Exploration for Tuna Red. It has Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. At the beginning of your end step, if there are no cards exiled with Valakute Exploration... You put them into their opponent's graveyard, then Valakute exp uh, uh. Sorry, I'm reading this wrong. Land enters the battlefield, you get the exile card. You can play that card until essentially your next end step. If that card is ex exiled still, then you put it into its owner's graveyards, and Valakute Exploration will deal that much damage to each opponent. Now we're getting into the lands. So one of our first fetch lands is Cabaretti Courtyard. This will let us get a mountain. We've got Isolated Watchtower. Taps are colorless. If we pay two and tap it, we can scry one and then reveal the top card of our library. If it's a basic land card revealed, we get to put it onto the battlefield tapped. We can only activate this if an opponent controls two more lands than we do. Maestro's Theater lets us get a swamp or a mountain when it comes into play. Riveter's Outlook lets us get a Swamp or a Mountain when it comes into play. Next, we're running uh, 18, I believe, Snow-Covered Swamps. It might actually be 21. I'll double-check in a second. But that pretty much rounds... Oh, I forgot. We're running Terrain Generator. It taps are colorless. If we pay two and tap, we may put a basic land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped as well. And then I've got some suggested cards. So this isn't in the deck proper. These are kind of cards I would like to add, but they were too expensive. Cavalier of Flame costs 2 and 3 red. It's a 6-5 elemental knight. If we pay 1 in red, he can tap our other creatures and give them haste. Sorry, he can pump our other creatures and give them haste. When he enters the battlefield, we can discard X amount of cards and draw that many cards. When he dials, he deals X damage to each opponent, each planeswalker. They control where X is the number of land cards in your graveyard. Next, we have Chandra, Awakened Inferno for 4 and 2 red. She's a 6 loyalty planeswalker that can't be countered. Plus 2, each player gets an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep. This emblem deals 1 damage to you. Minus 3, she deals 3 damage to each non-elemental creature. And minus X, she deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. If a permanent dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. Code of Arms will give each creature plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. So if we've got four elementals out, they're each getting an additional plus three, plus three. Door of Destinies, when it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, probably elemental. Uh, whenever we cast a creature of the chosen type, we put a charge counter on it, and creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destinies. Eternal Flame for 2 and 2 red says it deals X damage target opponent or planeswalker and half X damage rounded up to you where X is the number of mountains you control. Fury is a 3 and 2 red 3-3 three, three double striking knight. When it enters the battlefield it deals 4 damage divided as we choose amongst any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. We can evoke it by exiling another red card from our hand. Herald's Horn... When it comes into play, we choose Elemental. Elemental spells cost one less to cast, and if it's the beginning of our upkeep, we can look at the top card of our library. If it's a creature card of chosen type, reveal it, and we put it into our hand. 
Kindred Charge says choose a creature type. For each creature you control the chosen type, create a token that's a copy of that creature. The tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. This was almost the signature spell. Metallic Mimic for 2 is a 2-1. Two, when it enters the battlefield, we're going to choose Elemental. It will become an Elemental creature, and then each other creature we control that's an Elemental will enter the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. Morag Fury of Akum. Each creature we control gets plus one, plus one for each time it, it has attacked this turn. Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, if it's our main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of contact, combat, untap all creatures you control. So by having a way to play multiple lands in a turn with Morag out, we can actually get extra combat steps. Next, we have Season Pyromancer for one and two red. He's a 2 2. When he enters the battlefield, we discard two cards, draw two cards. And for each non land card we discard this way, we create a 1 1 elemental creature token. If we pay three and two red and exile him from our graveyard, we can create two 1 1 red elemental creature tokens. Shared Animosity for two and a red it says whenever creature we control attacks, it gets plus one plus out till end of turn for each other attacking creature that shares a type with it. Sword of the Animus costs 2. It gives the equipped creature plus 1, plus 1. Whenever the equipped creature attacks, you can search your library for basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. Tempt with Vengeance cost X and a red. We create X11 red elemental creature tokens with haste, and then each other opponent may do the same. For each opponent that does, we create an additional X11 elemental creature tokens with haste. Finally, we have Valakute the Molten Pinnacle. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped. When mountain enters the battlefield under your control, if at least five other mountains, you uh, may have Valakute the Molten Pinnacle deal three damage to any target. It taps for a red. Vanquisher's Banner for five. It enters the battlefield. Choose a creature type. Creatures get plus one, plus one. When we cast a creature of the chosen type, we draw a card. And that's it. I thank you all for coming along with me on this journey. I hope you guys will uh, show up in the future and work with me to help me make more uh, deck tech content and stuff for you. I'm starting up regular game nights every Wednesday to play Oathbreaker. If you're interested in that, reach out to me so I can get you a copy of the sign-up sheet. Having said that, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and you stay safe out there.